Hello, welcome to our module two lab class. Our goal here is going to be review some commands that we learned in our uh, previous videos, in our previous classes, but also learn some additional commands. It is not feasible to learn, go through all the commands that we have in the Linux environment system um, in our video classes. So, in order to reach out to some additional resources or tools, we're going to use these tools here in our lab class. Additionally, you will also have access to a cheat sheet. So, you're going to have access to a PDF file that has some basic Linux commands uh, and, and the description of those along with at least one example of each. These commands that you're going to see in that cheat sheet is going to be the basic commands that the CompTIA Linux Plus exam requires you to understand and use. Okay, now, in regards to this lab class, this is the exercises that we will try to answer and make some comments about those. So you can see here seven questions. They're all uh, technical questions. All uh, There is no conceptual quest question whatsoever. They're all technical. They All of them require you to um, deploy at least one command. At least one. You can use more. There are actually some questions here that will require you to use more than one command. Okay, so let's start with the first one. So it asks you to create an environment variable with any content. Make sure that variable is accessible from another session. Show that it is accessible from another environment. So you have to make sure that that environment variable is accessible from another session. You have to show it. So you're not just going to use a command to do it. You have to actually show that it's, it's happening. Okay, so let me go back here to my um, VM. So I have my terminal here. And the idea is, first of all, we have to create a environment variable. How do we do that? Well, the very basic way is the variable name. I'm going to name it var. Um, and the standard is always use uppercase letters to create Linux environment variables. It's not a rule. If I create this variable like this with lowercase letters, that's perfectly fine. Oops. But the standard says capital letters. Okay, so I'm going to create a variable called var. And the content that I'm placing in there is hello world. Okay, how can I see whether it worked or not? I can, for example, invoke the content of that variable by using the dollar sign and then the var name. There it is. There's the content. Okay, so I did put a content in that variable, but is it accessible from another session? One way of opening another shell session, you can invoke the bash command, but I'm going to do it a little bit different here. I'm going to invoke the born shell, sh. The bash is the born again shell. The old version of the born again shell, it was the born shell, and it's accessible. It's available in all Linux distributions. You can simply invoke the sh command. There it is. So, how do I check the content of a variable? Echo var. We can see that there is no content there. It means that variable does not exist. So, I'm going to exit, go back to my previous session. So, I opened one session inside the other. Now, I just went back to my former session. I am now going to use the export command. There. Okay, in this environment, 
it's there as it was before but let's see in our shell in our born shell is it there yes it is if i exit it's still there in my previous environment so whenever we want to create a variable and make it available in any session that we have we have to export that variable right there okay so now let's go back to our questions and move to question two go to the bin directory and run a command stored in that directory do not rely on the path variable you have to use relative or absolute path okay i'm gonna go here so it's telling me to move to the slash bin directory if i want to change the directory i use the cd change directory command space and use a parameter which is the directory i want to go to if i use the pw uh, pwd command okay i am in this slash bin directory how can i certify how can i check whether uh, uh, how can i run a command that is stored in this directory however the question says do not rely on the path variable use relative or absolute commands now what does that mean we have to remember that when we type any commands, for example, ls, oops, too fast. So when I run any command, ls, I'm not informing where that file is stored in my file system. What is the system going to do? What is the Linux going to, the Linux environment going to do? Actually, bash, what is the bash going to do? It is going to check if this command that I invoked is stored in one of the directories referenced by the path variable. Is it in one of these directories right here? This one, or this one, or this one, so forth, so on. Well, if I use the which command along with a, another command, the which command is going to tell me, okay, so according to the path variable, uh, these are the possible directories to, to store commands. And I did find the ls command inside the bin directory. But again, when we invoke that command, we're just invoking the command name. We're not passing the location. Now, what the question is asking you to do is to run any command that is stored in the bin directory without relying on the path variable or on the which command. You have to use the full, uh, you have to run any tool, any command that is stored in our current directory slash bin, not using just the command name itself okay so first of all i can list right to see what are my options here and i have so many options actually the ls command itself is right here now how can i run the ls command that is stored in my current directory without simply using ls I have to use a absolute path or a relative path. When you want to use an absolute path, you have to start from the beginning according to the location where it is stored. So I know that the ls command is stored in this current directory, which is bin. So I could do slash bin slash ls. Here I'm invoking the ls tool and I'm using a rel uh, I'm sorry, a absolute path. I'm going all the way back to the root 
directory, the slash directory. Then I go to the bin subdirectory and here I have my ls. Okay, that's one option. Right there. Another option is using the relative path. The relative path is a path that you use according to where you are located. Since I am located in the slash bin directory and the ls tool that I want to use is in my current directory, the current direct directory is referenced by the dot, just a single dot. Dot slash, because it's a directory, ls. So, let me go back there. Dot slash ls. So, we have these two possibilities here. Dot slash ls, if I am in the current directory where the file is stored, or the, the absolute path, which is slash bin slash ls. That's how we answer question two. Now, let's go to question three. The IP ADDR, which is short for address, you can also use address. The IP ADDR show command can be used to display your network interface's configuration. Create an empty file. Run the command mentioned above, but save the output in the eFace.txt file. Now rename this file to network.txt. Okay, so first of all, let's go back here. First of all, we have to use the IP ADDR show command. There. This is the output of this command. It's going to tell you what network interfaces your system has. So I have my loopback interface and I have my, my actual physical network interface. And you have some other information here, such as the IP address right here, the broadcast address, some other information, MAC address, some other stuff here which is not important at this moment. We are going to have a class to discuss network configuration. That's not our focus right now. Okay, now, what it's asking us to do is to send this output to a file, which is the ifaces.txt file. However, before we redirect this output, to the iface.txt file, we have to create that file with no content, empty content. I'm going to clear the screen here. If I want to create an empty file, I use the touch command. Touch iFaces.txt. Oh, I have to move back to my home directory. If I use the CD with the dash, just that option, dash, it's going to take me back to my home directory. Now I can create the file. If I check the content of that file, I'm going to see that it's actually empty. Another illustration about uh, a file or files is the ls command with the dash l option. There it is. And this is the file size. Zero. Okay. It's empty. So, now I have to redirect the output of the IP ADDR show command to the efaces.txt file. That's how we redirect it. It did not mention whether we should use uh, redirection erasing a previous content, if there was any, or appending this new content to the former content. Well, it really doesn't make a difference in this situation because the ifaces.txt file so far is empty. So it really doesn't make a difference. You can either use this or this. Okay, let's see if it worked. Let's take a look at the file content. 
there there it is so i'm checking the content of that file i can use the cat command and yeah the content is right there then it tells us to rename this file from myfaces.txt to network.txt i'm going to clear the screen here if i want to rename a file i am going to use the mv command move it stands for move mv ifaces.txt space network.txt so the move command which is similar to the ran command in a uh, windows environment is the command that you use to rename a file so when you rename a file you're not actually renaming it you are moving one file to another file which at the end you are removing the previous one creating another one with the same content or you're making a copy and removing the original one you're so you're removing at the end you're in renaming so you use mv the original name space the new name that's how you rename a file if i check my content here there it is my network.txt file is right there let's check the file content there it is okay good let's go back to our questions number four display the content of the network.txt file we've done it with the cat command replace oh there there is a all missing there replace all occurrences of inet for ip address so let's go back there and here is the content of our file whenever i see this string here inet 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 i have to replace it for um ip address what is the command that we can use to replace strings we can use the sad command and the sad command is actually a tool that allows you to use what is called regular expressions so regular expressions are the possibility of combining text string and symbols to represent a vast scope of possibilities so in this case i am going to use the s option and you must first initiate with the single quotes I am going to use the S option. The S option is used to say, I want to substitute, replace, slash, and you inform what you want to substitute. I want to substitute INET by IP address, slash. And if I only wanted to substitute the first occurrence, of inet this is what i would do like that but that's not what i want i want to replace all occurrences so i then i use this slash g space the file name and there it is here 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 and here now observe observe that if i look at the i'm going to clear the screen here if i look at the content of the network.txt file i still see inet there inet inet so the sad comment by default does not replace the content of the file only the output well we know that we could simply redirect this to a file it is important though to realize that i cannot use the same file name it will erase this file so you can redirect it to any file or we could also use the t command 
Okay, so there it is. Five, show the first five lines of the slash etc slash services file. Then show the last 10 lines of it. So we have this very large file here. The slash, oh, I'm sorry, slash etc slash services. It's a very long file. It is so long that we're going to go back, you're, we're going to move forward to the last question, which is how many lines do we have in the slash etc slash services file to count characters, words, and or lines, you can use the WC command. So if I do this, it's telling me that this file has 591 lines, 2,615 words, 19, a little bit over 19 characters. If I want to specify, for example, that I only want to see the number of lines, I use the dash L option. And I could also use dash C for characters or dash W for words. Okay, so there it is. You can see that it's a very long file, almost 600 lines. Now, if I use cat in this file, I'm going to see the entire content and it's going to go all the way to the end. Nope, that's not what I want. I want to see the first five lines. If I want to see the first n number of lines, I can use the head command. If I don't specify the number of lines that I want to see, for example, if I do this, it's going to show the first 10 lines. That's the default first 10 lines. If I want to specify, if I don't want to see the first 10 lines, but in this case, for example, I want to see the first five lines, I use the dash n option and then the number of lines that you want to see. So that's how you can see the first n number of lines. What if I want to see the last n number of lines? The last, not the first. We're going to use the tail. So we have the head and we have the tail commands. Since it's asking us to show the last 10 lines, which is the default, okay, now I can simply inform the file name as a parameter. What if I don't want to see only the 10, the last 10 lines? I want to see, for example, the last 20 lines. Well, you can use the dash n parameter, just an option, just as when you're using the head command. Okay, so let's go back to our questions. So number five, now number six, show the number seven, we've done it, how many lines, so we saw that it has almost 600 lines, and the last one, number six, show the lines from this same file, we're still working on the same file, slash etc slash services, that contain the NTP string. So we have to filter this file searching for the lines that contain a specific string. And the command that we can use to do such is the grep command. So grep NTP slash etc slash services. Those are the only lines that contain the NTP string. Now observe that it does not necessarily, it will not necessarily display only the lines that begin with N NTP. If I have these three letters together, it doesn't matter where they are. For example, here, they're not even a word. They're just part of a word. They are a substring. Okay, that counts. So the grab command can be used to do that.
Now, it is very important to keep in mind and to remember that we have the pipe symbol. And the pipe symbol is it allows you to build very powerful sentences, very powerful tools by combining different tools, by combining different commands. The grab is a command that is very much used along with the pipe command. So, another option of doing the same thing here would be, so let's say that instead of using grab directory, directory I would use cat. Then I would pass the content of this file as a input for the grab command searching for the lines that co contain the NTP string. There it is. And there is no limitation in regards to the number of pipes that you use. Okay, so we saw here how to use some commands to work on the uh, work with environment variables. We saw uh, the concept involved in using relative path and absolute path. And we learned some commands that we can use to filter strings, filter files, process files, replace strings and substrings, for example, using the sad command how to see the first number of lines, uh, first n number of lines, last n number of lines. So these are some very basic, but at the same time, very important commands that we have to know. Once again, you will have access to a cheat sheet with many different commands along with these ones that we saw in our uh, video classes, in this lab class, in the, in the previous videos but also some additional commands that are important to know to take the CompTIA Linux Plus exam. I hope you enjoyed this class. Thank you very much.